Yeah, um, obviously, last two squads I've been in, unfortunately, first one injured, second one I had to go home for a personal reason. Um, but all's good now. Obviously, got the phone call from from John, and uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Like I said, it was so exciting to get into camp, and you know we've had a good couple of days training, and I'm looking forward to to the game at the weekend. Your form this season has been brilliant. Is there anything you can put that down to? Um, not really. Um, you know, I'm just playing with a different confidence. Uh, at Blackburn, it was we lost a lot of senior boys, um, so felt like I could, you know, I had to step up um, on the leadership side of things, and maybe, you know, maturing off the pitch has sort of brought my form to where it is on it. Yeah, um, you know, my form speaks for itself at the minute, and you know, like you said, I can play up front, I can play in the ten, I can play in the wide areas. So, you know, for me, it's it's good because you can play a number of positions. Sonny. Hi, Sammy, How are you? Hi. Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, can you tell me how to pronounce Schmodix? Uh, yeah. So the Z's basically. Uh, Silence at Smodix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and welcome. Thank you. Um, are you looking forward to making the debut? Yeah, it's felt like uh, you know a long time coming. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago the first call up, um, and you know I wanted it back then. So you know with with the form and the amount of games I've played and seeing people get their debuts, it sort of made me hungrier for it, and I'm excited to hopefully get it the weekend. What about the links to, to Hungary? Were they were they live? Were they real at any point? No, it's all like I've said before. It was. Uh, it was all nonsense, really. Um, you know, obviously, granddad was was Hungarian, and obviously where the surname comes from, and it's just something that's that's never interested me. And you know, obviously, their managers come out and said what he's got to say about me. Um, you know, I'm not really sure where it's come from because I've never had any involvement or spoken to anyone from their from their country. So you know, I'm I'm fully focused on on Ireland and, and playing for and playing for them. Ironically, you could end up playing against them in a couple of months. Yeah, that will be a, yeah, that will be a, a strange feeling. Yeah, so. You know, hopefully, just uh, get this camp, you know, ticked off, get the get the games under my belt, and, and hopefully, look forward to that one. And John went to see you play. I think it was the, the Millwall game. You were on the score sheet that night. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Michael Obafemi might have scored that night yeah. as well. So when you look at your competition for places in the Irish team at the moment, then you look at someone like Evan Ferguson, for example. I mean, are you confidently expecting to, to get a, a game, get a start? No. Listen, it's it's obviously up to John and you know the staff. I've done all I can at, at club level. Obviously, like you mentioned, some some great names and some great lads in forms and scoring goals. Um, but like I've always said, I feel like I can come in and do a job and you know and help Ireland. And you know, there's some good names in. It's it's good to have competition. So so no one's comfortable. Everyone's always you know setting their standards high, and we're competing basically for them free them free front spots. Um, and hopefully, I've done enough, and I can prove in training that you know if I don't get a start, I get a good chunk of minutes. Ashley, hi, Sammy. Ashley Hiya. from Off the Ball. So we just spoke about being eligible for, for Hungary as well. Was it ever a hard decision to decide? No, it, it wasn't even really a decision for me. Um, it all came out of nowhere, really, which I was quite surprised about. You know, he said I used I used that as you know as a ploy to get into this squad, which, like I said, it's just it's not what happened at all. It's it's nothing I've ever heard of. I've never spoke to anyone from there, um, and I sort of wanted to do the interview just to squash it. For like I said, people read things on Twitter, and it's. It's, it's nothing. Like I said, it wasn't even a decision. It's nothing that's even entered my my brain. You know, I've I've sorted my passport for Ireland years ago, and I've been fully focused on getting into the camps and getting into the squads, and 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 hopefully and luckily I've done it this this weekend. That must be very frustrating for somebody to say you said things that. It is, yeah, it is frustrating um, because he doesn't know me. Uh, he doesn't know, you know, them things to say about me, um, and especially after not even. Not even speaking to anyone, it just came out of the blue. Um, but like I said, I'm fully focused on on Ireland, and you know that's background noise. You know, people can write things on Twitter and say things on Twitter, but you know, until you hear it from myself, um, you know that's that's all nonsense. And in great form at the minute. What do you put it down to uh, to be so consistent? I know a lot of things maybe off the pitch after line right as well. Yeah, just I think just the confidence in front of goal. Um, you know. In champ, the championships a, a tough league, um, and you know you're you're chasing your got your first goal, and I got that on the second game of the season, and you know they've all just followed through, and you know I just feel like if I get a chance now, I'm not going to miss, and it's a great place to be in. Gavin, yeah, hi Sam. Uh, we know you left the camp in October because of personal reasons. Were you disappointed not to get called in November? <laughs> Total personal reasons, but that interview you gave sounded like maybe something else. Yeah, I was I was I was disappointed because the personal reason was obviously only over that that October camp. 
it was something, you know, family comes first, I'm not going to sit here and speak about the issue, but I had to go home, I had to, I had to get back. Um, and obviously you read Twitters and, you know, people question if I actually wanted to play for Ireland, which, again, is just ridiculous because it's something I've wanted to do since I was 23, 24 when I got my passport. Uh, that October camp, I had to get back for my family. Um, and then, listen, disappointed with the November camp that I didn't get the call, but ultimately it was the manager's decision. Um, I thought I was doing enough at club level um, and, he, and he chose to go with other people. But like I said before, the past, the past, I've got to focus on this camp and future camps and I'm here now and I've got to take the opportunity with both hands. Yeah, I know you mentioned your versatility there. If you could pick one position in this Irish team, which you think you'd do best? What, what It'd be the do? 10, yeah, the attacking midfield role because I like going forward, but I don't mind you know sticking my foot in and getting back in and doing the defensive side of things as well. Ed? Sammy, how are you doing? Um, so think back to your first team debut at Colchester. Mm. For someone born and bred in Colchester to go and play for this boyhood club, must rank still, I imagine, one of your most important football memories. And just also then add what would mean then to make an international debut, how it would compare to something like that? Yeah, so to this day, it's still obviously family, friends, all Colchester United fans. So to make my debut there and play 100 games is, you know, is probably the best thing to happen in my career. Um, you know, I've scored some important goals in my career, but that's definitely my my favourite and my most important thing that's happened. And you know, ultimately the the international debut will, will top that. You know, for me personally, it'll be amazing. But like I've mentioned before, for my dad and you know my family that are from Ireland, it's uh, it'd be a massive thing for them. And just sticking with the Colchester team, um, I believe Dermot O'Leary has the right to claim himself as the most famous Irish man from Colchester, uh, if you score a few goals in the green shirt you might uh, have that play for yourself? Hopefully, you know, like, the goals would be a bonus, it would be amazing to, you know, to get a minute for Ireland, so let alone a go, so I've just got to completely focus on, you know, getting on the pitch and doing my job and, you know, hopefully the rest of it comes with it. That's good. Hey. Just on the Irish team, just remind us of the Grand Prix team and also your awareness of that early on. Were you scouted by the FBI at any stage as a teenager? Yeah, so Nan was County Longford. Um, didn't know much about it. Didn't really didn't didn't meet my Nan. Um, so it's it's tough coming through because you don't really know. You know, if no one's told you about the links, obviously I knew she was Irish, but you don't know how sort of down the down the line it is and how it sort of works. And it was only when I signed with a new agent that. Um, we looked down that route and we contacted them and you know it took a while to it took two three years to really sort the passport out to find all the birth the death certificates and sort everything out and you know luckily that's all in the past now everything's sorted I've got my Irish passport um, obviously leaving camps and not being called up to camps and like I said I'm just fully focused now on, on this camp and, and beyond. And just on the stage right in your career I mean, some players run key at the 17 some players come in straight away we have a tradition also in Ireland of late developers, Andy Townsend and John Aldrich, who went into their 20s when they came in. Is that something you're aware of? I mean, you know, Keith, Keith Andrews, obviously a player with the Blackburn make who I think 28 making his debut. Is that something you've read up on or been aware of that, that you could be one of those late developers? Listen, I was, uh, I was excited three, four years ago to make my debut, 24. Um, 28 now, I still feel like I'm quite young. Um, and, you know, whatever age you make your debut, it's a very proud moment. You know, if, like you said, if you make it at 17, if you make it at, at 35, you know, you've still got lads in the squad that are mid-30s still playing, you know, and it doesn't really matter what age you are if you're making your debut, you know, it's a proud moment. Um, and hopefully, you know, making your debut, I can I can sit here, you know, in years to come and have many more caps for Ireland. Owen? Sorry, sorry. Uh, what was your grandmother's name? Tony, Annette. Sorry, what's Annette. Annette. Yeah. Hein. H Y N E. So, uh, uh, Philip. Um, Sam, you're very lucky in Ireland. Um, John Eustace is your manager now. Yeah. I think you've been changing manager this season. Yeah. yeah. Tom was with us for a while. Did, did, did you talk to him about the Ireland setup at all? Or? I didn't know. Um, I, I spoke to him just before I left Blackburn to come here. Um, and he just obviously just said, You've been brilliant. Go and make an impact. Um, but I hadn't previously spoken to him, no. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was here with Stephen for a while. Yeah. J just. Um, Briefly about the, the the club situation, you've scored lots of goals. Yeah. Blackburn's season has been hasn't been where you want to be right now, and you've, you've got a battle in your hands. You, you, you could get dragged in, and you don't want it. But just I know this is international week, but going back to the club, you've got a big big games coming up, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a bit of a mixed uh, season for myself and Blackburn. You know, we've struggled, um, but on a personal note, you know to 
to have 27 goals in all comps and 21 in the champ and be at the top at the minute is, is brilliant for me. Um, but, you know, I'd rather change some of them goals for points because, like you said, we've slipped down there. We're only three points off it now. Um, and we've got some tough games. We've got Ipswich and Sunderland coming up after the after the break. Um, so, you know, these games are really important, but it's quite nice to get away from the club level and, you know, hopefully make a debut and just take myself away from that, that club side of things because it is tough at the minute. Um, and we know we've got tough games to come. So, you know, focus on, on Ireland, hopefully get some minutes and then, you know, get back to Blackburn. Just finally for me, Andy Moran has been a part yep. of this season, he's with the 21s this week, but he is going to come in for the senior squad. A little bit about him, what sort of, how, how has he impressed you? Yeah, really good uh, technical footballer. Uh, it was tough at Blackburn because the old manager had a certain style of play that I had to get used to and a young lad like Andy coming from Brighton, he had to do the same um, and he struggled a little bit under the new manager um, but you forget how young he is and how much of a big talent he's going to be. You know, I'll, I'll tip him to play in the Premier League and make many more because he's, he's, he's made his debut for Ireland, I'll tip him to make many more caps. Finally, Ken. Uh, so I just wonder, you, um, for example, watched the Ireland games for the last campaign yeah, I've watched them. Um, obviously, the ones I've been involved in in the camps. Uh, obviously, with the tactical side of things, I've watched them games. Um, and obviously, the November camp and camps I've missed before, I've watched. Um, obviously, I know the I know the boys uh, from club level and obviously from from this level. Um, so yeah, I do I do tune in and watch them. Um, we have obviously had a real struggle to you know get any positive results. At mm. all. I mean, are you any thoughts on what's been going on for us? I think it's just you know we. We need to score more goals and create more chances, and hopefully I can I can I can help with that. Um, I'm doing it at club level. You know, there's a lot of good good players in that in that change room, and you know, people that miss out from the squad. A lot of good technical players, and I think we just need more of an attacking threat. And you can see in the last two days of training that we've got real clinical, you know, attacking presence up front. Um, and like the question earlier, you know, we've got a lot of competition for places. Um, so I think you know we just need that freedom and that goal scoring, and you know, we'll we'll keep we'll keep achieving what we can. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you.